Hey, what's up, guys? This is Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sartuccia here, and we are finally getting some OJT done with the way I run the shop. You know, all my guys got to be able to know the gear, you know, and the only way to really know the gear is to take them out and go fishing and start passing on the knowledge firsthand with them so they got that experience to know and see how it works all together and this is also a great way to teach because when you're trying to end the shop to tell them hey this is what could happen this is what could happen it's different from actually doing it and actually putting your hands on it other than just a theory of what somebody is showing you or telling you and you know and that's the way I work like I really want my guys to know when they talk to a customer they know exactly what they're talking about because they've been through it time and time and time again and they know what to expect so that way if a customer you know asks them well what ha what happens if this or what happens if that you know there's so many variables to answering a person's question on the type of gear type of leaders type of weight and this is for me the fastest easiest way for them to remember because when you start downloading gear and teaching them and telling them here at the shop it's different so for me this is the way the hard life does it so check it out guys we're gonna have a lot of footage and this is from the night where i did that video short where i was lifting up that 42 inch uh, big black drum and like i said this is was also a trying trying day for us because huh, well you're just gonna have to find out here in just a little bit I got a lot of stress on my mind It's a nice day to go Yeah, I got a line I'm a the whole team So with the series of Teach Amanda Fish The biggest thing is really showing the true grit of fishing A lot of times you get out there And, you know, it's Everybody sees the finished product You know, they come walking up when you're landing the fish Or when you're throwing the fish back Or you're taking the pictures and so for me, this has been a genuine idea to show everybody who watches our channel what it is, you know, what we go through to be able to set up to land these big fish and or, you know, what it takes to get to those big fish. I mean, y'all saw in those last videos where we went shark fishing and, you know, we put out a ton of gear, ton of bait, and we landed only one shark. And along the way a lot of knowledge was passed and shared and stuff like that it just it goes to the point of you know a lot of people are getting into the sport and that's what they see is the finished product i want to show them that sometimes it's not as easy as it seems and it's like everything you know football base baseball um everybody sees the glory i want everybody to see the speed bumps, the walls, you know, the brick walls along the way and everything else. And it, it really can, you know, test test your, your grit, guys. So this is awesome for me because, like I said, it, it gives a whole new meaning to, man, those guys can fish. Or, man, they catch a lot of fish. Or, you know, whatever it may be. But when you start getting into sport, and that's why we, when you come to our shop, you ask us questions ask us well i want to go out and catch some fish okay what kind of fish um you know and you start really okay this is what i'm asking for this is where i want to go because there's a lot of times and you go fishing and depending on the type of gear type of bait type everything is a variable into deciding what kind of fish you're going to catch now obviously when you're fishing it is you know kind of like a box of chocolates you never know what you're gonna get but when you can sit there and actually design your gear or uh, curtail your fishing tackle for whatever you got going it can really uh, help you improve your chances to target the fish that you're actually trying to target so for us we're out here for big black drum and possibly bull reds and possibly some slots of both you know because a lot of that has been caught in this area and our family, I know we wanted to eat some, you know, some fish. So at the same time, you know, we had just gotten to the end of the pier. This is Goose Island State Park. And the, to the end of the pier where we're at is 1,600 feet. Yeah, that was a trek. Towing all the rods 
for all of our workers that, I mean, literally we shut down the shop on Friday. Uh, we shut it down about 2.30, 3 o'clock and we started making our way out here to come uh, start fishing. However, right when I get to the end of the pier, I get a very uh, disturbing phone call. You know, my wife had, we've been remodeling the house. Well, she attempted to remove a cabinet and locked her back up. So she was stuck in a position where, you know, she was in a lot of pain and everything else. And I'm over an hour away kind of deal. So she let me know what's going on. I'm asking some questions and stuff because, um, it's never happened for her. She's never had those kind of pain or issues or stuff like that. So I'm stuck in a pickle because a lot of the guys traveled with me. I brought the gear in my truck. And so I'm, I'm letting her know, you know, what we have done over here on this end. And what I'm going to have to do is end up leaving the pier, leaving my guys there to kind of fend for themselves, which is fine because Jeff is there. He's a seasoned fisherman. Um, we also got Jesse, one of the older cats. But... Um, with our gear, Jesse didn't have no experience with, so that's where um, Jeff came into play, and he was going to be able to teach him and lock him up on what they needed to do and so forth. And so now, as you can see, my finger I've got I've got it kind of stuck out because I had touched. Watch, there's a uh, double drop drum leader on there. Yeah. yeah. So in in that session right there, you know, there's a, there's a lot of time that I didn't know exactly what was going to happen and what I was going to have to do, but uh, it was definitely something I didn't want to do was to leave my guys there, you know, when this is supposed to be a learning event. And right then, you know, one of my lines slacked up, so I went ahead and checked it before I was going to make the trick. And yep, let's see what happens next. She was also thinking that maybe it was just, you know, a pulled muscle or something like that. So she took a pain pill. And we we're going to give it about 15 minutes and see how she was reacting to the pain pill. If the pain got worse, then obviously I was going to leave. So I was trying to get out as much of the gear as possible, get these guys locked on so they could start fishing before I got that phone call because I was really anticipating leaving because, you know, if she's in pain like that, I need to go check out and find out everything's okay. So we'll see what's up here in just a bit. I'm doing a nice soft cast just so I can get the line wet and then I'll really get it to it so yeah even with the solid braid even though it's a hollow core I mean because I was still able to splice it I want to see what it can do so let me go and get the line wet and I will get it recasted
Yes, sir. A lot better cast. You can see the difference in how far it went out. Doesn't look like much, but trust me, when you're on the water, that was a good 30 to 40 yard increase on from the first cast to that one. So let's see how it does with the shell and everything of the area that we're fishing at. And we'll keep it rolling.
Nope, we're just now getting set up pretty much.
As you can see, they have been working the rods, moving the baits, and rebaiting and so forth, and they're still putting several of the rods out. However, a few were left out of the water, but, you know, like I said, I wasn't there to, to guide them on it and stuff like that, but they did get rods in and rebaiting and so forth, so we'll see how long it takes to for us to get on our first fish. I am keeping kind of a little timeline, letting you know what time the trip started, what time we got to the end, started rigging baits, and so forth so that way it gives you an idea what we go through from start to finish kind of deal on each trip so again this is part of the teach a man to fish and get it going and right here i'm actually on the road you know to go take my wife to either the er er or whatever it was uh we end up going to a chiropractor which ended up being a blessing in disguise because she did hurt herself pretty bad, but it was a slip disc instead of a, uh, you know, something worse where, you know, she would require surgery or something like that. So they were able to realign her, but now she knows that um, she's kind of stuck with that's going to be something that's going to be happening on a regular if she pushes herself in any way, uh, shape or form in the wrong direction and stuff. So um, it still took me about three hours around trip to leave and come back. So we'll see how well they do with everything else. I just wanted to go ahead and give you a little update while this video is going. And I did a bit of fast forwarding, you know, just so that way uh, we can kind of get to the goodies because they are coming. Stay tuned.
they got the needle in the front, the needle in the tail. The little horns, they, they do, they stab with both the tail and the The trick is to catch them on there like this and push them back. And then you squeeze them like this. Or like that. Or they're like this. Because they'll, if you go for them, then they'll turn and they'll, they'll, they'll get you with both horns. Into that, then you just cast it a live bullet. Oh, fish wipes. You can hit again on it. Perfect right here. Here. Whose pole is this? This is Mike. Mike's. Get Mike's out of the way. Mike's is going off. You got him? You want the camera? No, you do it. No, I'm talking to Jeff. No, I got it. Dang, he's going. Can you take the camera out or the phone out of here? You're doing good about just. Uh, Turn it, whichever way you need to turn it. Anything else need to come in? Yeah. That's what I'm hearing.
I do. Do y'all need pliers? Let it go, poop. You poop it. That must be a female, huh? Because I don't hear like. Oh. Forty-two. Forty-two. Holy shit. Ready? Where's forward? Where's two <laughs> Mike, can I get over here? Mike, can I get over here? So I can look at the fish. Straight, 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 straight,
does now. Well, nope. What do I need to do? Hold on, hold on. Going under, going under. Oh, no, he's not. Uh, where's he? Oh, there he is. There he comes. Red. Hold on. This is crab legs, dude. That was a crab leg. Up, we gotta get this crab leg. Yeah, I know. Back it up, back it up. Go this way, go this way. Do you need pliers, TJ? Yeah. Mike, can you take this to them? I should have brought one. I should have brought the mini pole to catch one on. I should have brought one the mini pole to catch one on it. Forty if you squeeze it hard enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thirty-eight and a quarter. Still a baby. No, nah, you'd be alright. I brought one all the way to the pier with uh, my mini pole. It was at least 30. Jeff, show him off to the camera. Give him the big girl. <laughs> Yeah, I got it. Just 
just wait till that fish wakes up. Do y'all have the clicker set on these reels? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, yeah, finally woke up. Is that what that is? Mine's dead. I can't maneuver around all these rods though. Nah. No, it's smaller. That's 